an ant. Yes, but we're eatable ants. I found that out. What do we do to it? I set it all out. Right now, we're caught if we wanted. The Martian only has to go a few miles to get a crowd on the run. But they won't keep on doing that. They'll begin catching us systematically, keeping the best and storing us in cages and things. They haven't begun on us yet. Not begun? Well, not begun. All that's happened so far is because we don't have sense enough to keep quiet. Bothering them with guns and such stuff and losing our heads and rushing off in crowds. Ah, oh, instead of our rushing around blind, we got to fix ourselves up. Fix ourselves up according to the way things are now. Cities, nations, civilization, Congress. Yes, but is that so? What is there to live for? Well, there won't be any more conflict. If it's amusement you're after, I guess the game's up. What is there left? Life, that's what. I want to live. Yeah, and so do you. We're not going to be exterminated. And I don't mean to be caught either. Tamed and fattened and bred like an ox. What are you going to do? I'm going on. Right under their feet. I got a plan. We men as men are finished. We don't know enough. We got to learn plenty before we got a chance. We got to live and keep free while we learn, see? I've thought it all out, see? I'm sure with the rest. Well, it isn't all of us that are made for wild beasts. That's what it's got to be. That's what it's got to be. That's why I watched you. Watched you. All those little office workers that used to live in these houses, they'd be no good. They haven't any stuff in them. They used to run. Run off to work. I've seen hundreds of them running to catch their commuter's train in the morning. Afraid they'd be canned if they didn't. Run them back at night. Afraid they wouldn't be in time for dinner. The Martians, they'll be a godsend for those. Nice, roomy cages. Good food, careful breeding, no worries. Yeah, after a week or so of chasing around the fields on empty stomachs, they'll come and be glad to be caught. You've brought it all out, haven't you? Yeah, you bet I have. That isn't all. These Martians are going to make pets of them. Train them to do tricks. Who knows? Get sentimental over the pet boy who grew up and had to be killed. Yeah, and some maybe they're trained to hunt us. Possible. Yes, yeah, they will. There's men who do it flat. One of them will suggest to me by. In the meantime, you and I and others like us, where are we to live when the Martians own the earth? I got it all figured out. To live underground. I've been thinking about the sewers. Under New York, there are miles and miles of them. And there are big underground storerooms, railway tunnels, subways. You begin to see that. We got a bunch of strong men together. No weakness. That rubbish, out. As you meant me to go. All right. With you, a chance, did not Won't quarrel about that. Go on. Well, you got to make safe places for us to stay in, see? Get all the books we can. Science books. That's where men like you come in, see? The raid the museum. Or even spy on the marsh. May not be so much we have to learn before. <laughs> Just imagine this. Four or five of their own fighting machines suddenly start off. Heat rays right and left. Not a Martian in them. Not a Martian in them, see? But men. Men who've learned the way how. Maybe even in our time. Gee, imagine having one of them lovely things with a deep ray wide and free. We turn it on Martians, we turn it on men. We bring everybody down on their knees. That's your plan. Yeah. You, me, the Martians. We own the world. I see. Hey. Hey, what's the matter? Where are you going? Not to your world. Bye, stranger. Well, after parting with the artillery when I came at last the Holland Tunnel, entered that silent tube. Anxious to know the fate of the great city on the other side of the Hudson. Cautiously, I came out of the tunnel and made my way up Canal Street. Reached 14th Street, and there again was black powder and several bodies and an evil, ominous smell from the gratings of the cellars of some of the houses. I wandered up through the 30s and 40s, stood alone on Times Square. 
Caught sight of a lean dog running down 7th Avenue. The piece of dark brown meat in his jaws. A pack of starving mongrels at his heels. Made a wide circle around me so he feared I might prove a fresh competitor. Walked up Broadway in the direction of that... that strange powder. That silent shop windows. Displaying their mute wares to empty sidewalks. That's the Capitol Theater. Silent. Dark. That's the shooting gallery where a row of empty guns faced an arrested line of wooden ducks near Columbus Circle. I noticed models of 1939 motor cars in the showrooms facing empty streets. Over the top of the General Motors building, I watched a flock of black birds circling in the sky. I hurried on. Suddenly, I caught sight of the hood of a Martian machine standing somewhere in Central Park, bleeding in the late afternoon sun. And the same idea, I... I I rushed recklessly across Columbus Circle and into the park. I, I climbed a small hill above the pond of 60th Street. And from there, I could see standing in a silent row along the mall, 19 of those great metal titans, their cowls empty, their steel arms hanging listlessly by their sides. I looked in vain for the monsters that inhabit those machines. Suddenly, my eyes were attracted to the immense flock of black birds that hovered directly below me. They circled to the ground. And there before my eyes, stark and silent, lay the Martians with the hungry birds pecking and tearing brown shreds of flesh from their dead bodies. Later, when their bodies were examined in laboratories, it was found that they were killed by the putrefactive and diseased bacteria against which their systems were unprepared. Slain, after all, man's defenses have failed. Uh, the humblest thing that God, that wisdom, put upon this earth. Before the cylinder fell, there was a general persuasion that through all the deep of space, no life existed beyond the petty surface of our minute sphere. Now we see further. Dim and wonderful is the vision I've conjured up in my mind of life spreading slowly from this little seedbed of the solar system throughout the inanimate vastnesses of sidereal space. But a remote dream, maybe. Maybe that the destruction of the Martians is only a reprieve for them and not to us. It's the future ordained for us. How strange it now seems to sit in my peaceful study, writing down this last chapter of the record, begun at the deserted farm of Grover's Mill. Strange to watch children playing in the streets. Strange to see young people strolling on the green where the new spring grass heals the last black scars of the blue dirt. Strange to watch the sightseers enter the museum where the dissembled parts of a Martian machine are kept on public view. Strange when I first saw it. Bright and clean cut hard and silent under the dawn of that last great day. <laughs>
featuring Walter Wells and the Mercury Theater on the air. Next week, we present a dramatization of three famous short stories. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> There you have it, folks. This is TJ Morris, ET Radio, and I am Teresa J. Thurmond Morris with our UFO Secret Space Talks for our UAP Associates, and we share the UFO Association of our members that have worked diligently to correct anything that you may have heard on this Wells Fantasy. Thirtieth, nineteen thirty-eight, for a presentation for the next day, which was October thirty-first. That's right. That was a holiday special, and that was him talking as a member of a group in New York, and it was broadcast on CBS and Columbia Broadcast System. So. With the way that we are now in the world, we're on a lockdown on April 5th, 2020. I thought it would be a good time to present that. Uh, Normally, my regular time is 7 p.m., and people will be looking for me to show up today, at least weekly on our radio shows on Sunday, because I have Teresa J. Morris Ministries, which access American Communications Online, which has a department for all those veterans, Allied Command Organization, and all the veterans, we started uh, as a way once we retired to keep in touch through the American Veterans Association, and I am uh, one, and we have various groups that we meet around the world, and we were going to do this and share how we could get together annually and meet each other, which we did in Ohio County when we started in 2000. Uh, We started the Bluegrass events, and uh, we had, uh, at the beginning, uh, in Ohio County, where Bill Monroe Foundation began, and I was a plank owner there. We had a lot of great music from around the world, and uh, a lot of people show up every year, and we had built our own stage, and we had our equipment to record, and we had Dr. Uh, Mercer come up, and uh, work with the Ohio County Association for the county and the state. And uh, as far as I know, Doc Mercer is still around. I I don't know. It's 2020. And during this COVID-19 virus outbreak uh, around the world, I don't know where a lot of people are on the planet. And um, so as God would have it, I like history and how we put it together and how we put folklore together and ace folk life and how we're going to move forward in our entertainment and communications and how we can uh, all do our part. And I have this company, American Broadcast. It's American Communications Online as a broadcast company. I have ACIR Radio for American Culture International Relations, our Allied Command Internet Radio, <laughs> both, as we build this, uh, which this 2020 uh, hindsight is better than foresight, has sort of stuck me in arrears on paying the bills, but I don't know how we're going to get all this done, so you can hear me weekly, but hopefully we'll have somebody sponsor us weekly. Uh, Starting in May, because April, I don't even know, maybe something out of my government check, because I'm an American and I'm retired from DOD, DON, uh, driving a commercial truck and delivering for U.S. Treasury and Microsoft and uh, Bill Gates, five years ago, uh, did a story on TED's Talks, TED Talks, and uh, it was very brief, but he did tell us what was going in the future, so maybe I'm a major prophet. (laughs) However you want to think about it, I'm here alone. I've only got enough food for one. 
maybe to last me a month if I don't count milk and eggs because I couldn't even get uh, any eggs here in 